What's up guys? I'm Laura from Reading in Bed and this is going to be hopefully a short rant review of The Woman Who Stole My Life by Marion Keys. Uh, this review is dedicated to Rachel who inspired me to read this um, because she uh, is reading some of her older review copies. This is a book that was published five years ago and I have a review copy. So um, now I posted on Instagram already so you guys know that I really hated this book and a few people responded and said well what do you expect with a cover and a title like that. Um, but I've read Marion Keys in the past and I really like her like she writes edgier kind of darker chiclet so I enjoy that. Um, this was not that. This was uh, silly and nonsensical and a complete mess and I'm gonna try to confine my ranting to just one aspect because I already tried filming this and it was way too long. Um, but the biggest problem with this book, apart from the just like silliness, is that uh, there's no framing device and it really really badly needs one. Uh, this is a book told in very close first person perspective and whenever I read a book like that, unless there's some kind of framing device that is, you know, whether it's like letters or someone remembering back to, you know, something that happened earlier in their life and telling someone or, you know, something like that, or unless the writer is just such a, you know, strong writer and, and provides such a strong voice for this character, I am always left there like, who are you talking to? <laughs> you know, like, I don't know if this is supposed to be um, a stream of consciousness or if I'm supposed to feel like I'm talking to a friend or, or, or what, but um, I, a lot of books, I think, need that frame. Um, so in this example, we've got Stella, who's a 39 year old uh, wife and mother. Uh, she's a beautician. Her husband is very busy. She's very busy. She's got a lot going on. Um, so the premise of the whole book is that she falls ill with locked in syndrome. So she goes from like being the center of her family life and, and you know, working and busy and everything else, like a lot of us feel, right? Um, to all of a sudden being bedridden for a year and, and not just bedridden, but she's unable to communicate uh, except through blinking. Um, and so like her family never really get the hang of it. So the only person she's communicating with is her neurologist. So, you know, and this part of the book was okay, although like I said, it, it could have used like a more structure and more of a frame. But then we move into these various other plots and I'm like, why are we even doing this? Um, so one of them becomes sort of like a behind the scenes look at the publishing world in New York. Uh, another is sort of like a grifter story. That's where the title comes from, where Stella uh, kind of gets hooked up with this personal trainer nutritionist who is clearly to all the readers um, just trying to like worm her way in so she can steal her man and steal her book deal and all that. Uh, and then there's like another even sillier one about uh, Stella's ex-husband. Um, who like insane with jealousy because Stella is now a successful author uh, and he's a frustrated artist embarks on this um, you know art project I guess to give away all his worldly possessions and see if karma provides for him which spoiler alert it does not um, so like you can probably tell like each of these could almost be its own book and probably should have been like if you're gonna smash all these weird elements together and I, I'm not even gonna get into how they fit together because that's where the ridiculousness comes in like how Stella goes from you know a beautician who is recovering from this illness to suddenly like a celebrated self-help author is just so dumb that I'm not gonna get into it but the thing is uh there were so many opportunities for there to be a frame around this book through which the reader could actually enter in a like meaningful and um you know logical way that might have taken away some of the silliness of this book uh for example when stella is sort of on tour supporting um a book that she she didn't even write but again I won't even bother getting into it. It's mentioned several times that she is maintaining social media accounts and writing blog posts and writing articles. We never see any of them. That would have been a perfect vehicle uh, to sort of you know take us into the story. Uh, and in sort of the present day of the book uh, Stella is attempting to write a second book. Like that's the whole thing. She got this publishing deal but now she needs to like do the next thing or you know the publishing world just moves on. Um, that could have been you know like excerpts or the first chapter or something but we never see any of that either and it's just like yeah so I, I have nothing to sort of anchor myself in this story. Um, the story itself is so silly that I don't even really want to. Uh, and you know the the good things I can say about it 
there's two of them really one the writing itself is really good like on a sentence and word choice and dialogue level that's the only reason I actually saw the book through is that it was a very easy and breezy kind of a read so uh, and that takes skill like I don't want to downplay that Marion Keys is a good writer I think she just she was trying to do something in this book I don't even know what but she failed <laughs> uh, the other thing I can say though is after some light googling I discovered that this was kind of a comeback book for Keys um, after being in like a pretty uh pretty profound depressive state for a couple of years so you know maybe this was a meta kind of commentary on that because it it is sort of a very negative view of the publishing world and what happens to authors when they kind of make that breakout book and then they have to follow it up or you know uh be left behind um the the inanity and the uh, craziness of doing book tours and all that kind of thing the the vapidness of the new york publishing world that's all in there um i don't think it's done very well but maybe that was her saying something maybe she felt like she had to write this book after being sort of out of the game for a while but didn't really want to and that's what this really was trying to say you know, I'm being generous <laughs> because I like Marion Keats and I'm not writing her off, even though this book was terrible. Um, but yeah, I mean, that that is a possibility, I guess. I, someone could make the case. I'm not going to because this is a rant review. Um, so yeah, like this book, uh, if you saw my post on Instagram, I, I threw it in the trash it was the recycling, so it's okay that I took it out. It was just newspaper and stuff, but it is going back there. I'm not going to give this to anyone. I don't really want anyone else to read this. I want you to read other Marion Keys books that are actually good, and let's just sort of forget that this one ever happened, okay? It'll be our little secret. Back to the recycling bin. So anyway, thank you for listening, and um, yeah, Rachel, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, slight rant review.